Hi everyone, this is Rachel over here at RK Stumbling Bear. So today I wanted to do my October wrap up and I read 16 items this month, 13 of which were manga. So I didn't exactly stay to my October TBR of finishing things, but I did have a fun reading month. I'm going to actually start off with the manga because I read manga pretty fast. And what I was feeling is I just wanted to jump into series that I, well, I read three different stories for my manga this month. And one was a complete reread. One was like an offshoot of that reread. And the other one was a continuation, just catching up on what volumes have been printed in English. So um, for the reread, I started work rereading Fruits Baskets. So I started reading, so I started rereading Fruits Basket and the editions that my library had were the collector's editions, the ones that I started the reread with. So that was the uh, volume one, two, and three of the collector's editions. Same story that we know. Really love getting back into the world with Toru. And this might sound controversial, but I remember on my first read through, I thought Toru was going to end up with Yuki. So during my first read through, I actually thought Toru was going to end up with Yuki. Just because of the interplay between them, it seemed really good and interesting, and he seemed more active with her. But now, you know, I'm rereading it. I know how everything ends, and I guess that was a spoiler. Sorry if you haven't read Fruits Basket um, of who that who she does not end up with. But I still think they have a lot of good interplay, and it, I am enjoying the character development more so than I did the first time. Sorry, I keep looking out my window because I'm expecting someone to come. But I guess if you have never read Fruits Basket, the premise is the... Uh, the Chinese zodiac exists, um, or the zo zodiac animals exist, they're people, and if someone from the opposite sex hugs them, then they turn into that animal. And it's considered a curse by the current generation. And that's all, because anything more is spoilers. And so then the second series I read was adjacent to that. As I was asking my library for Fruits Basket, I saw that they had Fruits Basket Another, and I was like, well, what is this? And so I read the first three volumes, and it, well, actually, there's only three volumes, and it seems like it's the kids of the original series, but it's very much of a whirlwind story. And while I really enjoyed it, and I enjoyed like the, I thought the characters were good. I wanted more, and it just seemed like a very abrupt ending to those to the three volumes. It seemed like there needed to be a little more story. But I guess that's because I don't want to leave the main character in a bad situation, even if there's hope, like in the future, of, hey, well, life will get better for her. No, I, I want my complete arc. And I didn't feel like I got that in those three volumes. But I also understand why the author wouldn't want to go back into that world. And it was really more of a like a here you go, they're kids kind of thing. So in the collector's edition, or not the collector's, so in the adjacent uh, books, I did like that they even made a joke about, oh, if you hug me, I'm not gonna turn into a cat. I was like, that was sweet. That was really a lot of fun. And it was fun to see how the children, there was a lot of trauma with the original generate, like the generation we met in the first Fruits Basket. And to see that their children, they realize their parents are not 100% okay, but that their parents have tried to give them a better life, a more stable life. And so that is really nice to see that difference. And then the series that I was catching up on is one of my favorite, and it's Skip Beat. The premise is Kyoko. Sorry if I m am mispronouncing these Japanese names. I don't speak Japanese, but Kyoko um, is dumped basically by the love of her life or who she thinks is the love of her life. 
and she vows to get revenge. And since he is in show business, she decides that she's going to get into show business and she's going to be greater and more popular than him. And it starts her journey as she joins a management company that does actors and they say talent, talento or talents um, that does like comedians and other like not exactly under percent search and what all that encompasses anyways um but you know and so she's working to become a famous actress and the series is her getting to have self-confidence in who she is confronting her past trauma or her the, past, the events in her past that have brought her to where she is now and learning to love again and learning how to love appropriately and what different types of love looks like, like the love of friendship, romantic love, the love of a parent. That is really the focus of this story is learning the different types of love and how to work with that. Now, I also just really like Kyoko because she is a zany character. The way she bounces back when something gets her depressed and I love, like, so she's supposed to be, she, I think she starts off the book 15, or the series 15, um, but where I'm at, she's now 16, and she still is in love with fairy tales, and I remember at that age, I was that naive as well, and in love with fairy tales, so I really enjoyed the series. I, they, the most recent English one that I finished was 44, and I'll, you know, I'll have shown pictures, I know. Now, for the non-manga that I read this month, um, at the beginning of October, actually October 1st, I finished To Be Taught If Fortunate, a novella by Becky Chambers. And then this book is, or this novella is about a group of astronauts who are traveling through space. Um, and they're discovering different worlds and sending back reports and while they're traveling, they're also getting news reports. So the, it's like they are put to sleep in between the planets that they visit. And when they wake up, then they're getting news reports about what's happening on Earth. And as they are journeying to different places, hearing just hearing what's happening on Earth shapes how they, whether they want to continue their journey or return home. And it, it's really well done. I enjoyed it. I then reread Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. If you have watched the Miyazaki film, then you kind of know the gist of it, but the book is way better and it's different. The Miyazaki film really painted like the villain as war. And yeah, it, it changed how the structure of the villain was. So. Go read the book if you haven't yet. But it does follow Sophie, who has been cursed by the Witch of the West, and she is... Sorry, my screen went dark. And she is... Um, she's been cursed to appear old, and she had felt like she was stuck behind when her father died and her stepmother had uh, sent her sisters to different places. Now... Um, Sophie has a, the idea in her head, because this world does have magic and fairy tales. She had it in her head because she was the oldest. She wasn't meant for anything, and it was the youngest, her uh, step or her half-sister, Martha, who was going to have all the glory and riches and magic. And so she wasn't surprised with how everything was doled out, but... When she was turned old, she decided she was going to go off and make a life for herself. And so it's how she does so. And then the other book that I finished in October is The Light Brigade by Cameron Hurley. I'm pretty sure this was listed on my TBR for November because it finishes, um, it finishes the books that were nominated for, or it finishes my list for the novels that were nominated for the Hugo. And this is, a, I would call this another political sci-fi. I find, I have found out this year, I really like political sci-fis. But it has a lot of um, talk about capula, 
capitalism. It briefly met, mentions socialism, but it's more like how people want to have power and they will do everything they can to keep that power, even if that goes to disenfranchising people so they don't feel like they're citizens and only giving partial information to those who are citizens. It was really interesting reading this during the election cycle. There were a lot of things that seemed in parallel. And Cameron Hurley is always really great about going, here's a big messy issue, and now I'm going to tackle it in this book. So I I really suggest you read Cameron Hurley, um, anything that she's ever read or she's ever written. I also like her Geek Feminist Revolution essays. Anyways, I, so The Light Brigade follows Dietz. And you don't find out till the very end what Dietz's first name is. So at first I was reading Dietz more as male and then found out Dietz was female or considered herself female um, just because of the in, the impersonalness of a last name. But it was more of a military thing. And so at the beginning of this, Dietz joins a corporation's military unit in order to go fight or in order to go fight in the war against the Martians and during her time learns what that war is actually about. Something that I think this book was a little bit weak on was it really stuck to the stereotype that if you are joining the military that you stop thinking that they don't allow you to think. My husband uh, my husband was in the National Guard and this is something we've had many conversations on. It's a stereotype that Hollywood uses as well, that, oh, you're in the military, you just follow orders. But that's not how the military actually trains their people. They really do want them to learn how to think on their feet as they're going. And they are, I mean, you're taught obedience to rules so that when you're in battle, you know that the person next to you, what they're going to do but it isn't supposed to be a blind obedience where I will do awful things because you tell me to. And so I think that is a something where the book really missed out. Now you can always say, because this is in a dystopian world and it's corporations that the military structure was corrupted and it wasn't. And so it's now more of a, you do what I say mentality. But that was, that was, that was my nitpick with it. Otherwise, honestly, all of these series ended up in the five stars for me because I really enjoyed them. It has been a good reading, or October was a good reading month for me. Now, there was one book that I started but did not finish in October, and I am still currently reading it, and that is The Fire of Heavens by Robert Jordan. This is my husband's rereading the Wheel of Time series, and I have had read up through book four, which was my favorite. Um of the series thus far and so he really wanted me so he really wanted me to read it and so he could talk about it so I am on book five and I am currently that is what I'm currently working on at this time so I'm doing better about following my TBR for November if you have read any of these books or have any uh, manga that you would like to tell me about so that I can read more manga, please put those comments down below. Um, or just, if you have any book recommendations for me, I'm getting towards the end of the year that, and I am finishing up the, uh, I, the nominations for the war, like for the Nebulas and the Hugos, the World Fantasy uh, Awards that are issued this year. And so if there's any books that you think are really good and that I should read, please let me know. And you all have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye.